Hello everyone, my name is Thomas. If you're watching this, you probably know who I am or you've stumbled across me. So, uh, I do ink and drawing and other things. I generally try not to make too much of a mess. Actually, that's a lie. I usually make quite a, well, I try not to make a mess, but I do make a mess. So today, it's a bit of a rough day. Remember the family passed away. But uh, the unfortunate thing is we all have an expiry date, I guess. The unfortunate thing is it were. So that being said, uh, I'm still going to draw because that is what I do. Ah, cat, out of the air set. Oh my goodness, kitty. Kitty, don't come back here, kitty. Sorry, folks. No, stay out of the ink. Yes, you, you too. Sorry, I have a pair of very rambunctious kittens who want to help a lot, all the time. Go lay down, sweetie. So, one of the first things we're going to do today um, is talk about a few art terms that uh, a few art terms that people use that drive me bonkers. One of the first ones is, "Oh, that color really pops." Colors don't pop. Colors have high brightness, high saturation, perhaps. If you want to go on that route. Uh, they have a lot of depth sometimes, uh, but they don't pop. They have high contrast, but again, they don't pop. So popping is a noise, like that's, that's popping. One variant of it anyways. My page does not make noise, not like that. So moving along, that is a commonly accepted term and it drives me bonkers. Um, the next thing I'm going to tell you is um, I'm going to talk about how I am making this while I do it. And if anybody tells you what art is or is not, they're full of it. That being said, I will probably tell you what art is in the confines of how I do it. But again, if anybody tells you, well, that's not art. This is art. Shut up. Sit down. Let me tell you something. You're wrong. Okay. So now that we got that out of our system, um, let's, uh, let's talk about drawing. So a couple things that uh, I want to touch is that first of all, in in drawing, let's see if I can move my, my camera a little here so you're a little more centered. There we go. Typically, uh, everybody does it differently. And typically what I would used to do is I would take a, I'd take a pencil and I would draw out lines and go over the lines dark and I'd color in like it was a coloring book. That is a way to do it, and you know I'm not going to say it's not valid, but with colors it works a little differently uh, because if you want to get a appropriate color and add depth to it, let's uh, let's pull out some ink here and take a look at. It. Always shake your ink when you pull it out after you make sure it's closed because it should be closed when you put it away. But if you have cats that like to move things, they may somehow mysteriously open your ink one day and you find that your your uh, white and blue checkered shirt is suddenly white, blue, and bluer checkered shirt. So, let's just pull out, they call this bright red. I find that to be a little disconcerting. I think that's more like orange. But hey, that's, uh, that's how it is. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna try a few different things. First thing we're gonna talk about is uh, just color and versus color making something look like it has three dimensions uh, versus just a flat shade so we're going to organize these in terms of shade i guess so we have red violet we have cherry red we have crimson we have bright red which looks more like orange more on that later and we have actual violet which i call purple but it's for highland so what we're going to do actually is we're going to take three of the two of these inks away, set them over here. We're not going to drink them. I'm going to drink some of this delicious coffee. Mmm, delicious coffee. It's got a little bit of crispy crunch, uh, hot chocolate in there. It's good stuff. No, they don't pay me to tell you it's good stuff, but it is. So we're going to take uh, we have purple, we have cherry red, and we have red violet. So we know that the violet is or the purple is the darkest. 
we know this one is the medium, this one is lighter. So let's say right now that we just wanted to paint a, uh, a thing of color. You know, I don't know what we're gonna call it, but we're gonna, we're gonna paint a thing of color. So what we're gonna do is we've already shaken this up. We're gonna take that and we're just gonna do a line. Whoop, there you go. Now we can use the, the dropper here if we're so inclined, just go, but be careful not to scratch, especially with softer paper or smoother paper rather, like the Canton paper I'm using, you will see scratch marks that will actually score the paper if you push with any degree of weight. So we have that there. Now to make it look like the same color but darker, we're gonna do a, a line of the red violet beside it, just like that. We'll grab, you can use a brush. I use a glass pen because the guy at the Art Shack, artshack.ca in New Brunswick, Moncton, New Brunswick, uh, they don't pay me to pimp them out in their wares, but they're really nice people. And uh, yeah, so shameless plug. So what we're just gonna do here is we're just gonna, just gonna kind of pull the dark stuff into the lighter stuff, right? And that'll be fine. And you can of course pull it out that way too, a little bit more. And uh, so it doesn't look a whole lot different. It's a little lighter here, it's a little darker there, but that's fine. Um, you'll also find on my desk, there's always an amount of toilet paper. I use it for wiping off things and lifting. In this case, uh, we may do a lift, but right now we're just gonna talk about making things look three-dimensional and two-dimensional space using color, as opposed to just uh, using you know, darker shades of graphite um, as you would with a pencil. Now, you'll notice the ink ran here because I didn't control it, and that was my fault. So we're, now we're gonna pull that back over this way a little bit. And this isn't an exact science the way I'm doing it, but it is what it is. So, lift that up like that. Now this is gonna score the paper with how I'm dragging the tip on, because again, the Canton paper that I'm using is very, uh, very smooth. And if there's any damage to the paper via tool or process, uh, if you were to take a paper towel or whatever and lift this, it would be incredibly, incredibly dark. Or uh, visible, excuse me. Which we may do in a moment. So, you can see here now that uh, there's way too much ink on the paper, but that's, that's fine. Uh, and we're just going to do a little tiny thin line here. Just a little whoop because there's already too much ink. I don't think that'll save that, but you'll get the idea of what's supposed to happen here. No, you're not, because that's not enough ink now. But you know what, instead of adding more dark ink, I'm gonna go back to the, the cherry red. And we're just gonna do a little line of cherry red. Just like that. And we're gonna go, first we're gonna go to the, to the more mid color. That'll reduce any extra, any ink and we'll stop any, uh, I guess you could say runoff. And you'll notice as the paper gets wet, it does tend to bow too. The Canton paper is amazing for not bleeding through. All right, so now we're just gonna grab this stuff here like that. And there's going to be all kinds of scratch marks because I wasn't super careful about it. But what you will see, what you should see when it's done, when I lift, is you will see that uh, it's darker on the sides, lighter in the center, and that's how we use color. Oh, look at that. There was so much ink it actually left the toilet paper there. So you can see actually where it was pooling and it kind of distorted it and you can see where I scratched it using both the pen and the, uh, yeah, it's really bad there, isn't it? There we go, let's see how much it dries it. And the uh, toilet paper. So, that isn't great, but it does show you lighter to darker, lighter to darker. Because uh, traditionally what we would do is you take a pencil, if you're just drawing, excuse me, if you're just drawing a Thing like this, and you would just 
thicker lines here on the outside. Just like that. And that would be a basic, you know, can shape, I guess. Now the great thing about ink is that if we wanted to, we could take ink and we could uh, we could put more darker ink here and just pull it up and it would layer it time after time. Or you could use the same ink instead of darker ink for a much more gradual increase. Now there is something I've never actually done and I've seen it done on a couple of YouTube things. I am super curious about it and I would love to do it and I'm even going to tell you what it is mm. after I drink a mouthful of coffee. So, what it is, is people take uh, droppers and they put water on the page and they just drop a little bit and it goes whoosh. It's very cool looking. I don't know how controllable it is, but it is cool looking. So, barring that, um, I have this little container I found that I put water in and this uh, brush, which I routinely don't clean because I beat the crap out of it. Sometimes I cut parts off of it if I want a different fan. Um, I'm a little destructive with some of my stuff. Uh, I don't mean to be, but sometimes that's necessary. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wipe that paper, that water off the paper. We're going to just try to draw. You know what? Maybe it's best if we actually use the thinner brush. And I just got a text message. And I'm going to ignore it, at least for time. Water, 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 water. All right. So now we're going to go here. We're going to whoop. And apparently there was still some ink on this brush. Great. That's fine. Um, it also didn't do what I wanted it to do. But that, again, is fine. Bob Ross and Happy Little Accents, everybody. Everybody knows about the Happy Little Trees, right? So we're just going to put some heavy water on there. And maybe, like, I don't know, like, give it like a little, like, dragons or a little face thing. Now the trick is here, from what I understand, is you're applying water. You are not smudging it into the paper. That's a, that's a big no-no for doing it this way. Um, so we'll see how this goes in just a moment. Art's about exploring. Yeah, I'm telling you what art's about. Nobody's telling you what art's about. They're full of crap. So I guess I'm full of crap. Oh, that's soaking into the paper. So I guess we got to be quick about this. So we'll grab this. We'll grab that. We'll do just a little. Oh yeah, look at that, fiddly D. All right, so that's how they're doing that. And they're doing it with different colors and stuff too. So I guess the truth of the matter is you can in fact more or less paint with water doing the same sort of thing now. If I just grab some of that with a little bit of water, that should uh, wash that, that out. Yeah, the pigment just washes out. That's really neat. Some people use ink like watercolor. I uh, I layer it on like I'm a 16 year well, 12 year old girl with cheap makeup and I don't know how to wear it. But hey, I'm learning. Right, I've been at this a little while, so it is about learning and exploring and trying to keep cats off your art set, apparently. Okay, we'll pull that down like that. We'll even spike up the nose a little bit. Because we can. Oh, weird dragon head thing going on here. Oh, I'm sorry, I moved my page. And uh, as it gets more washed out, I can come back up here and use the thinner stuff to make that sort of gradient that we were just talking about uh, and dealing with that weird looking thing up there. Alright. Hmm. So now that's wet. I could drop some purple on that. Is that going to need more water? Let's find out in this rendition of Let's Make a Mess. No, it's not trailing. Okay. So it does need a fair amount of water. It looks like it actually uses a surface tension to pull it around a little bit. 
and that's fine. All right. So overall, our little experiment uh, was certainly interesting. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's mess around. So if I apply more water to the already wet parts, Will I be able to chase that with the dark red again? Oh, and there go my little elephant cats. And the answer is yes. So I could do that, and I could just pull a little bit around, being careful not to attach them, or otherwise it's going to leak into into each other. You know, shorter handled brush here. Yes, sweetie cat, I'm drawing, and I see you poking your head over the table. All right. Yes, and I hear you too, kitty. My cat likes to be part of the art process. All right, so. Ooh, let's not drop that. That is why I secure the bottles. So now, if you try to lift that, I'd imagine that's probably brushed into the page enough that you're probably not going to get a whole lot of lift. But hey, like I said, it's about trying stuff, right? Now you get a little bit of lift. Uh, actually, it looks kind of poopy with lift. Eh, it's not so bad. It's kind of weird. So let's uh, drink some coffee, because that's what it's there for. Let's look, at, let's look at something else here. Let's grab some charcoal. And uh, let's draw this. So let's say that we have that same sort of eye shape, right? We're going to throw some dramatic black. So dramatic. Batman would be a fan that's so dramatic. We're going to grab a Q-tip, and uh, we're just going to... do this. And what this does, aside from making a horrible squelchy noise, is it pulls the charcoal out from the main line, and it's kind of like smudging, except your fingers are cleaner. And the great thing about doing it lightly is you can always go back and make it darker later. So there you go. Life is good, right? So now let's say we wanted to use the same three inks and make an eyeball. I've not done this like this, so uh, it's going to be exciting. First thing I imagine we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, yeah, we're just going to want to make a mess right there. Yeah, it looks good. I like making messes. La 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 la, making a mess, making a mess. All right, so there we go. All right, so that's where the darker ink, no, it's where the lighter ink is going to go. We're gonna go bloop, bloop, bloop. I said bloop, oh, I guess it's not gonna bloop. I guess it soaked up the water too fast there. It's fine. We're going to follow along the charcoal like cheap eyeliner. There we go. 
now. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab this brush. I'm just going to there we go. Sort of brush that in. And I know I went too dark there, but that's fine. We're going to lift it to lift any of the extra ink off. So we don't have to wait for the drawing process. Now, if I was doing like actual fine art, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I would. I would wait. I. I grow a little patience. But for this, this is fine. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. We're gonna hit the corners. Now, I can use a glass pen, but I'll get scratches. So I don't wanna do that. I could use a brush. Um, if I had any that weren't disgusting. Like the two I have here, like the only ones I have. The cats have not. I'm going to blame my cats. They haven't actually destroyed them. I'm going to blame them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're just going to sort of pull it along like that. So this gives us the illusion that it's the same color, but there's... Uh, but there's a shadow. Okay? Now, if we take the purple, the, if you will, the uh, <clears throat> violet, um, we're going to actually shape the ball of the eye. We're going to do it like that. This one we'll use the pen for. Because this should be a very fine line. And the eyeball doesn't have to be perfect. This looks reptilian. It's like a dragon eyeball. So, you know, like, I don't know when the last time you checked out the anatomy of a dragon, but let me tell you, I never really have. So, if their eyeballs are, you know, more ovoid or perhaps square like certain strange mammals, then, uh, you know, great. So that's the outside. Now, we're going to let that one sit for a minute. Um, and in fact, what we could do, if we want to add extra darkness, or extra contrast, to really make the colors pop, I can hate that term. We're going we're gonna to bring this up like this. We're going to bring this down right along that edge seam. We'll even hide that bright color there. And we're not going to quite connect it to the eyeball because we don't want that running. There we go. Okay. So, from that, you have a very basic eyeball shape. Now, I said we're only going to do this with the three colors, and uh, I lied, because we're going to use a few more. Because if I continue to use just those, it's going to be a big red mess. Well, not a big red mess. I could do it, and I could graduate it through, and I could give more rounded gradient to it. But I don't got time for that. So, golden yellow. This is an unmixed ink. This is yellow ochre, I believe. Yellow ochre. And yellow ochre, when it is unmixed, looks like that. Which is why it's important to check your cap and shake the crap out of them to make sure they're mixed. Because if you don't, you could end up with something uh, terrible. Now we're going to put that in like that. I'm going to grab the pen. The reason I use a glass pen is because the ink really doesn't adhere to it a whole lot. If you wipe it off, it's uh, usually not an issue. And you'll see here that the darker ink is still there. So we're going to use that to our advantage by pulling it in through because it's not 100% dry yet. Because anything that is too uniform looks mechanical and not biological, really. Which is funny because most biological things are fairly uniform, but they're not symmetrical, I guess is a better term. Yeah. 
Yes, kitty, I still love you. You wonderful biological creature, you. All right, so. I could lift that, and if I lift it, it's probably going to look gross. I could leave it. I'm going to lift it. Let's find out. Let's find out together. Yep, that sure is gross. I don't know why I keep thinking lifting yellow ochre is a good idea. Yellow ochre, uh, the yellow ochre from the Bombay India ink uh, selection I use is never a good idea to lift it. It always looks, well, not always. It just, it tends to look washy. So we're going to put a little too much ink on there because that's how we roll. Um, you know what? I'm going to use a brush instead of an ink because I'm just going to wash it all over this whole thing. Or the pen, rather, the glass pen. This will make it a little smoother, hopefully. Yeah, okay. Not really, but I'm, I'll take it. Okay. Now this one, I know you can lift, and it's not as... Uh, Are you serious? I guess it's because I have the red underneath. Take two. You know what? No. We're going to leave it like that. Happy little trees. All right. So with that, I'm going to grab my white ink. What I also got from www.artshack.ca. Actually, I went to the physical store because they're cool there. Say hi to Daniel there if you ever go in. He's very nice. And uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna pull this around like that. A little diblet up there. The reason we're doing this is because we're trying to make it uh, look roundish. Okay. This rendition should be called Tom Makes a Bleep and Mess. But that's okay, you know, it doesn't turn out every time and that's all right. That is, that is exploring, that is figuring it out. The first person that built a canoe, I guarantee you, went to the bottom of the lake. So, let's uh, carefully lift this now, because if we lift it um, from the center out in little dabs as opposed to one big press, we can sort of slurry it and leave it brighter on the outside. There, like that. There you go. See, look at that. There you go. Now, again, that's not exactly what we wanted, but, you know, practice makes perfect. And frankly, I don't want to be perfect. I want to have fun doing it, and sometimes it's going to turn out. Sometimes it's not. That's, that is the reality of, of, of creation, you know? People for, you know, thousands of years have tried to figure out the best way to do everything, and they still don't have it, because times change and so do we. All right, so there. Now I'm gonna grab a pen. I'm gonna pull that down like that. Now we know if I lift this, it's going to lift strangely, because we've done that already. We're going to do it again anyways, because in this case, it's kind of what we want now. See? It's, it's very faint. It's very subtle. It's not perfect. It's not exact, but it's ours, and that's what makes it great. So, I have this Bombay Black ink. And I have a Pearl Noir ink that I normally use for calligraphy and the like. In this case, we are going to uh, not use it for calligraphy. Well, we're not using the Pearl Noir anyways, so I guess that's okay. Now you'll see here that as I go through, 
I let the ink go out to where I had scored the paper. I did that, as you can see, because it made the eye more uh, stylized. I've been told before that my stuff is hyper stylized and that that is true, I guess I suppose it is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I have a good friend who keeps telling me that style is making the same mistake over and over and over until it becomes your signature. Well, be that as it may, um, this is stylized, yeah. So I was going with that, sure, we'll go with that. So we have a, uh, a critter eyeball here. Now, what we could do is we could, uh, we, we discovered earlier today in doing this that we can use brushes to wash color away. So I am very curious now, if I soak down here, like that, how all that black and charcoal is going to mix. Yes, kitties, I still love you. So what we're doing here is we're adding contrast, not pop, flare, or jazz, jazz heads, no. We are, well that's, that's just me playing there, I shouldn't have done that. Um, what I want to see now is if I grab that and I just brush it out, can I kind of watercolor that ink out, and yes, the answer is yes. So today we're not exactly doing a fine art rendition of anything. What we are doing is we're exploring and we're living. And that, my friends, is what life should be about, living. Because if you don't try new things, you'll never know. Yeah, it looks quite like poop. That's okay. See, if I could reliably get that sort of shade, I could just darken this bit up here. Nah, I'll leave out where it is, I think. That's a weird kind of eyeball thing. Because everything's built, built in pieces, you know. We did a basic dragony face down here. We did an eyeball thing up here. It's, uh, that's all what we make of it. So now, we've learned a lesson about that. Let's apply it. It's not dry, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to destroy my sketchbook and put it up here on top of the big old light that's right above my head. All right. So. We can deal with this in a reasonable, logical, process-driven method. And we will, in a way, I guess. I got some greens. What we're going to do here is we're going to take, because... I am curious how this is going to work. Let's not use toilet paper. Let's grab the old paper towel. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the paper towel. I'm going to roll it like this. I'm going to dip it in the water. And I'm going to go squish. Try to get it to drop. And it's hard to see here, but there is water drops kind of squeezing out. 
So these water drops are more than I feel the paper can actually soak through. And that's good. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this water drop and we're going to go up and up. And this water drop, we're going to go up and up. And this one, we're going to come up to the side. And this one, we're going to come up to the side and up and up. And these ones, we're just going to, we're going to grab, ah, we're going to drop the brush on my shirt. And we're going to grab this one and we're going to just sort of dribble it like that, pull it downwards. I'm going to try an experiment here. First things first. Uh, right. This is a sepia. It isn't brown. It's sepia. Excuse me. I should probably shake it. Make the rules break the rules. All right. There we go. I'm going to grab green here quickly. I'm going to put the grass under the tree. helpful if I actually pick up ink. There we go. All right. Now what we're going to do here, um, so we're going to grab toilet paper. This is very pretty, but this isn't exactly, you know what? We're going to do something else here too. We're going to pull this down like that. It's going to be tree arm there. And we're going to grab that wet paper towel chunk that I took. I'm going to dip it. And we're going to apparently drop it right there where I did accidentally. And then we're going to do some more all the way up here. All right. I know the water's not real clear on camera. I apologize for that ahead of time. So we're going to drag this water. Probably able to see a little bit of the contamination of the ink there. Hey, hey, cat! Get out of there, cat! You're not supposed to be there. The cat is currently on my PC, which is beside me. Because he figures that's a good place to be. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna drop a little brown, like it's my lovely wife coming home. Nope, it's not, okay. And just drop a little more brown there. And I'll pull that brown around just a little bit. This will be a tree, believe it or not. I know it doesn't look much like a tree now, but it's going to be. Uh, what I will do is I will lift. Now the browns, I'm going to warn you, look pretty bad when you lift them. I don't know what it is about them, but they don't look great. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get, get rid of some of this green because there's an awful lot and it's going to start making a mess. And once you put it down, you gotta soak up what it's over, otherwise you're just smudging it. It's very bright, but I guess the water does wash it out. That makes sense. I've never lifted water like that, so. Interesting. 
You can hardly see that at all now. That's really wild. All right, well, we're going to drink some coffee. Delicious coffee. Okay. So now we can hardly actually see that. We can see the green, but the brown is very, very faint. So I guess we're going to go over it again very faintly with the sepia. I could throw more water on it first. I'm not going to do that exactly. I'm going to uh, just drag it around like that. Try to get some fake bark texture in there. I guess it's not really fake bark texture, it's some bark texture. We're just going to go along the edge of that because we don't want to lose all that, that lovely texture that we already painted in. Best part of that, you can't tell if I'm sarcastic or not. All right, so now we have sort of a tree. Sort of. But trees need those things. What are they called? Leaves. Yeah, that's it. Leaves. I got a piece of sponge here, which came out of my art kit. So, uh, you know, waste not, want not. Let's, uh, let's use it. What we're going to do here is we are going to throw a little bit of grass green up here where likely a great majority of leafiness would prevail. And we're going to grab what is this just it's called just green not just green it's called green as opposed to grass green it doesn't look very green to me but whatever do it we're just going to splotch it like that and uh just kind of turn it as we do it So you get the rounded sections. Just kind of turn it when you smoke it. Because you don't need to draw every leaf on the tree. You just have to give the idea of color, depth, and texture. There. Um, now for the grass. Ooh, don't crack your ink on the table. That would be bad. I'm going to just throw a little more of this down here because that's really faint. I like how it comes up into the tree, but not exactly the way it does. Now, there's still some of the darker stuff on this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of pull it upwards. go so it's not bad you get a little tree a little bit of grass you know it's not exactly a dragon there's no dragon here you can put a dragon in there i guess mm, coffee all right um the tree still isn't dark though there's a couple ways we can do that we could leave it just as it is we could outline the tree and make it darker. We could take some brown, maybe some Van Dyke brown, uh, instead of just the sepia, and streak it down the tree. I kind of like it as it is, as far as the brown goes, though, despite it being so light. That's the only thing I don't like, is it's so light. You know what? If I don't like it, then let's change it. 
because you can't give me input because this is a recording. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just dunk that there. We're going to grab the little brush. I'm not even using my pen very much today, am I? And we're just going to sort of give that, this, this particular brand is also a little more red. I don't know how well that's showing up, but it is. Maybe one there. And what kind of tree is this? Well, it's a green one with brown bark. Yeah. Looks kind of exotic, right? It's got a little hole in it here, or apparently chipmunk's lip. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually lift a little bit of that brown because it's a little too, oh, I just dripped water on myself, a little too dark. And I guess because I brushed it, it's not going to lift. If you just put the ink on, you can lift it, but if you if you brush it in, it's it's not going to not going to go anywhere. I'll just there we go. So there, for my older brother Andrew, we now have a happy tree. But a happy tree alone, well, it might be enough. But, you know, it's nice. Maybe I could dab on some, like, yeah, it wouldn't be so bad. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Uh, where did I put that sponge? I am so organized. Tell me I didn't put that sponge in my coffee. Hmm. Well, nuts. I don't know where it went. Truly don't. Those of you who are watch watching this are probably, la oh, where's my head? Probably laughing at me now, but that is fine. Yeah. All right. Well, isn't that exciting? Hey, look, more sponge. Another piece here. It's totally the same piece, right? You can tell by its lack of ink. Anyways, let's move along. Sound of the gong. We're going to just put a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of ink right here. Okay. I'm going to focus, focus on the paper, yo. Okay. And we'll be like, little, little, little blossoms here, little blossoms there. You know, these are uh, not real flowers, clearly, but uh, you know, whatever. It gives it a little more something aside from just boring green. And there you have it, a tree with blossoms. But again, that's not enough. So now there's a couple things we can do here to do this, this kind of nice naturey looking thing which I could just leave alone which I don't know how well the camera's actually picking up but the, the color on it's actually actually pretty decent uh, it's not gonna really look great is it the grass is kind of nice oh gas doesn't want to focus okay whatever it's kind of nice um what we could do is we could outline this with black you know, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I was gonna like draw like a dragon or a gremlin or something, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as it is. And tighten my bottles and put them back, and I guess we're gonna call that done for today. I do thank you for time for watching. There will be a Patreon being set up shortly. I haven't exactly figured out how the tiering for things works, but if you'd like to contribute, become a patron, chip a little little coin my way so I can afford ink, coffee, paper, you know that sort of rent. Well, maybe not rent. Rent, rent I guess I got to take care of. But, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. The consumables. 
then uh, I would greatly appreciate that and it would allow me to continue to do this sort of thing. I know it wasn't a great, fantastic picture that came out this time uh, in accordance to artistic standards, I guess. But what I will say is it was exploratory. We did learn some stuff that we'll use in uh, future drawings and it was uh, a lot of fun trying to watch my cat while I was doing it. So I thank you very much for your time, folks, and I hope yourselves, I hope you have yourselves a great day. Be good to each other.